Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, Northern Lion plays the Binding of Isaac at Ruth Plus. It's Egg and Baby in the morning. 9.42 a.m. on a Sunday here. Doing well, thank you for asking. Actually, uh, slept in. You might think, like, when you make your own hours, you, you won't have a moment where you look at the clock and go, Holy bursh! <laughs> That is not the case. G3TG WYM7. I uh, I woke up in a start, like one of those like TV wake-ups where you go from like laying down uh, on your back to like sitting up straight in bed in in a single blink of an eye. Because um, I heard the baby crying like insanely loudly, like the kind of loudness that would that would wake you from a, a thousand year slumber. And I said, uh, you know, internally, I was like, this is like, it turned me into a caveman, right? Then I, I waited a second, and I heard it again, and I realized it was just Tomo. And he wasn't even, like, crying because, like, he was in danger or in pain or anything. He was just drinking some clean water. It's like he was just saying thank you for the water. And I was a, I was a little upset. I mean, not, not really, because what are you going to do, right? I mean, he's, it's not like you're going to sit him down and be like, don't do that. <laughs> he's kind of, you know, he's governed by arcane cognitive impulses. I, I can't even understand, much less exert any kind of control over. Um, so that that woke me up like super early. But I went back to sleep pretty quickly. And I think that's why uh, my brain was like, don't wake up until a little later. Normally get up around like 7 Sometimes even a little earlier. Looked at the clock when I woke up. It was 8.32 and I went, you know, it, it was like one of those classic, like, uh, movie kind of routines where it goes like, and he's like, you know, he's taking a shower and he's making the toast and he's, you know, getting the orange juice and the milk and the cereal. He's got his tie on backwards. He almost leaves the house without pants on. I mean, I, I work at home, so it's not really like that. But I was like, man, I got to get this baby fed. And then, you know, it's it's going totally fine. Everything's everything's cool over here. Had a nice uh, remainder of the day off after I recorded a little bit of an Isaac episode yesterday. And uh, I, I am very appreciative of the fact that the Isaac episode was very merciful. You know, it was like a uh, one, one of the easiest wins we've had in a long time. One of the fastest wins we've had, you know, certainly in 2021 so far. Um, it was very nice. Yeah, but had a, had a good day. Uh... Went for a nice walk. I guess it was like a some kind of Pokemon Go event. I I, I haven't reinstalled Pokemon Go yet because I, a I don't leave the house. Um, but but b also uh, I already have the baby monitor app on my phone, and if I install a second app that eats the battery, I think it's gonna go from a full charge to zero in like less than ten minutes. So I'm trying to ration my battery usage. But we took a nice long walk yesterday. Uh, Kate caught some some shiny Gen 1 Pokemon, I suppose, and it's the good, relatively good weather. I mean, I don't I don't think this is uh, divisive in the slightest. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this other item, by the way. But uh, I I the be in my opinion, at least, the best kind of weather. Wow, what a what a freaking rip. Okay, well maybe uh, let's get some more money and we can still get an arcade on the next floor. Um. I guess we we got tarot cloth. I can't say it's that much of a rip. Let me caffeinate before we get through the rest of the story here. The best weather for me is a that corridor from let's call it about April to uh, maybe like the end of June. A spring or mild summer day is beautiful, and it's you know even though the average temperature like in September is at least here is probably around the same as the average temperature in in uh, May I think you just appreciate those May days a little bit more because you just got through the the winter time no matter how mild it is here you know it's the very rainy very gray so you know when you when you have a day that actually has some sun and maybe it's like you don't need to wear a long sleeve uh, sweatshirt on top of your normal shirt you're like you know you just appreciate it more it's like even if two meals have the same degree of, of deliciousness, um, there there can be a difference in how you consume them based on the uh, severity of your hunger. Judgment. 
Okay, wait, hold on. We got a double judgment. I'm definitely willing to go pretty hard on this demon judgment. But, you know, secondarily... <laughs> I think we'll just hold this for a bit, okay? I mean, I definitely... If we could get extra HP out of a Judgment, like, everything's gonna fall into place on this floor if we get a deal with the Devil. That's fine. Um, because they, And that's why I'm holding Potato Peeler. I, I would love the Orbital, but I don't want to use Potato Peeler if we could also just get a deal for half price from the deal with the Devil as a result of, of holding it. But... Um, secondary to that, I would say, is is a mild winter day. And and I don't mean like, you know, oh, normally it's like minus 30, but today, you know, it's only minus 10. I mean like those days where you, you could, as long as you bundle up, you feel like you could be outside indefinitely without it being really that much of like an inconvenience. Bless you, by the way, baby. Bless you. Um, that was what yesterday was like. It was just, you know, it was a little crisp. It was, it, you know what, it, it was like the air was minty. <laughs> you know when you eat like a, you know, mint chocolate chip ice cream or something like that and you've got like a simulated coolness, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not like you're, you're worried about your mouth actually freezing to death. I don't know how a mouth would die, but anyway. Probably from singing uh, uh, Rebecca Black's Friday. <laughs> Sorry, it's a joke from 2011. Um, the apparently, a time-traveling joke. Anyway. Yeah, baby, hello. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's not pretty good, though. A lot of people, uh, they, they, they went to bad for dunce cap after the... After the tier list, where I, I don't think I put it in run ruining. Ah, uh, maybe I did, I don't know. It was a long time ago, and, uh... I was also, uh, I was a different person back then. That was before the tier list. Now the tier list has rocketed me to superstardom. And I, uh... I, I, I don't remember what it was like to be the old me. The old Britney can't come to the phone. Why? She's dead. Well, I was hoping, of course, to get, uh... Maybe a spirit heart in here. But instead, we're gonna have to just not get hit. Hey, baby! Which is, it's plausible. It's not implausible, baby, to not get hit against Monstro. I mean, come on. Larry Jr., I don't know, but Monstro? He's, he's Monstro. We should be fine. So, yeah, it was nice. I will say, though, like, mint, it, it's one of my, I, I love mint as a, as a herb. Uh, I, I love dill as well. Two slightly divisive, uh... Herbs. Everybody loves, uh, you know, parsley. I mean, some people are like, it's just, it's just grass. Yeah, but it, you know, it always enhances the the presentation of a dish. You wouldn't know, baby. Stop trying to comment. You don't know. You, the only thing you've eaten in your entire life is, uh, you know what? So unfortunately, because we lost our spirit heart, we can't take this. Though I would love to. We should have saved the dice shard for the. Uh, For the item room, I think, but whatever, so be it. What, what, whatever happens, happened, you know? I was thinking the other... Well, wait, let me finish my train of thought. I did have Mint almost kill me once. I uh, brushed my teeth when I'm on the way home from Korea, which is just a long flight, basically. Um, so, you know, I, I brushed my teeth because I had been in the air. I don't know. Well, not in the air, but I'd been traveling for like 30-something hours, and I was like, I don't know like what time of the day it even is, but... Let's get those teeth brushed, because I feel like I need it. Um, this is scary, man. I don't know. G please give me some HP so I feel like we can justify using the potato peeler once. Come on, man. In the clutch. <laughs> Came through in the clutch. Okay, now give me a second, because I know you're going to be like, why are you doing this? I got to see what's available. Oh my god, we don't have any keys, otherwise that would be mighty interesting. Um, let's just grab our HP and get out of here. We're gonna stick with the uh, Book of Belial just because we already got it, you know? Um, we already got some value out of Potato Peeler, I mean. So I brushed my teeth, um... And then, you know, I got on the flight and we got to cruising altitude and they were... Oh no, it wasn't... Uh, hold on, I got like 20 different... Not that... Look, I could have just kept that story going, but I realize now it's false pretenses. No, no, no. I didn't... I didn't want to unpack my toothbrush. Now I recall. 
I did not wish to unpack my toothbrush. As a result, I, I bought some gum, and then while I was chewing the gum, I was like, you know what? We're in the fl we're in flight. It's like 4 p.m. local time. I'm gonna have a beer. Absolute worst tasting thing I've ever experienced. Mint plus canned airplane beer. Would not recommend. Anyway, it's a very spe hyper specific situation, but I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, you know, in case you find yourself in in, in those shoes later. Um, but I was thinking the other day, taste is such a weird. Uh, sense. Don't you think? What do I mean by that? Well, like, you could describe how something looks, you know? It's, uh, you could describe it by its shape, its size, you know, what its texture looks like, um, you know, its color, etc., etc. Uh, you can describe what something sounds like, you know? It's, uh, you know, high pitch, low pitch, of course this is all subjective, I suppose, but you get the idea. Um, and even, like, you know, with touch, you can describe what something, you know, feels like. How do you describe taste? Like, I know that people... You can compare it to other foods, sure. But, like, on a, on a base level, how can you describe taste? I know that people say that, you know, because you learn it in, like, fourth grade, so as a result, you're still at that period where you assume, like, uh, adults know everything, and as a result, you put that in your memory banks and you never become skeptical of it at all. I, but they, they teach you that, you know, there's like five or six fundamental tastes, like sweet, salty, bitter, umami. Everyone's like, don't forget umami. Don't, yeah, I get it. You, you, you know, created your identity by being the person who, when they heard those, was like, I'm going to remember umami for the rest of my life. Get over it. We're all nerds here. We're all in the same boat. Um, we all remember umami now. Regardless, okay, so using using those tastes... Could you uh, describe the taste of cilantro? I mean, what, what can you say, right? Okay, now, here's the clever answer. It tastes like soap. Okay, I get it. You either have the... Uh, the, the genetic composition that makes cilantro taste like soap, or you hate eating anything that's green and leafy, and as a result, You've tricked yourself into thinking it tastes like soap when it doesn't. Anyway, one of the two. I'm not. You might be the one who really has it. It's the other guy who's making it up. Um, but it, it, assuming you're one of those people who enjoys the taste of cilantro, you know, you like Vietnamese food, you like Thai food, etc., etc. How would you describe its taste? I cannot describe its taste. Like, what does cilantro taste like to me? I don't know. If mint tastes cold, cilantro tastes kind of warm. <laughs> No, no matter what I'm eating, cilantro tastes like soup. I don't know, does it re just taste like soup or does it remind me of a soup? I don't know, man. It's impossible. It's There's no, like, objective measure. It's, I mean, would you say it's, uh, would you say it's sweet? I'm just gonna pop this down right here. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't mind if I do. Mmm! Hold on, this is a terrible time to caffeinate. That's like two good crawl spaces in, in a week. Would it, is cilantro sweet? You know, if you want to be a point dexter, does it have a, uh, a composition of, you know, g glucose in it somewhere? Yeah, you know, it, like it's a plant. So, presumably, <laughs> at some point there's been some, some photosynthesis going on. Um... But does it taste sweet? No, I would say not by, you know, normal food standards, not, not not by comparison. Is it bitter? No, not, I mean, if it tastes like soap, then you would assume so, yes, but uh, not not particularly if you don't have the, the soap gene. Um, is it is it salty? I don't know, I don't think so. How, how could it be salty? It contains, I mean, it might, ah, hold on. Hey, hey, haters, back off. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm realizing a couple of things real quick. Three fundamental truths at the exact same time. One, if we're going to use Epic Fetus, we need to pick up a speed upgrade. Two, we need to be smarter. And and three, it doesn't matter. You know, this is it's a Hamilton joke. I apologize. But I, I'm using this to essentially make my, my case... I think taste is the weirdest sense. 
Because it's, it's, everything else, I, oh, come on, man. I kind of see as, like, it describes, uh, like, the, it, like, the dimensions of something, if that makes sense. Like, it, it, it describes something almost physical that, that's easy to understand, you know? Like, how does something sound? Well, you know, it's like a frequency. How does something look? It's a shape, it's, uh, you know, the, things that are very easy to describe. Even a smell, to some extent, and we're gonna we're gonna try these because we gotta, and they came through in the clutch. You love to see it, um, but a taste is like it's the 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 chemical composition of something. So I, I think like fundamentally, you know, with like when something tastes sour, you're like, oh, there's a high concentration of hydrogen ions in this. And when something tastes um, sweet, you're like, there's a you know high concentration of sugars in this. But uh, when something uh, <laughs> when when something doesn't fit into one of those predefined categories, it becomes very difficult. What the heck the like what the heck does cilantro taste like, man? I don't know how to, it's one of those things, you know, it's like a joke. You just had to be there. You got to you got to sample it for yourself to understand. Hey baby. No no joke though. Cilantro? Oh, it's one of the If if you like it, I understand it's a little divisive, but if you like it, it's one of the top tier herbs. If we were doing like a like a herb, I call them herbs, by the way. Um, but because forty-seven percent of my audience is American, and and ten percent of that forty-seven percent like think that they invented how everything is pronounced, I try to Americanize my pronunci pronunciations just to save society a lot of time that could be used for hypercorrection. Um, either way, it, it would it would be I I might put it at the top of the list. I love dill as well. I think I just, you know, in a, in another life, I was like Icelandic or something. Any time, and it is literally two times, but any time I've been in, in Iceland or, you know, the, the, the time I went to Sweden, I was like, these are, I was going to say these are my people, but I don't know, I guess I can't really say that. All I mean is that when I went to, like, their breakfasts, I was like, hold on, fish, bread, and cheese for breakfast? These guys have got it figured out. Hey, this is my ideal breakfast right here. It's like there's something deep in my soul that, that wants to eat, like, you know, a whole salmon fillet for breakfast. Anyway, take me down here. Take me down. How we doing? I would I would say with our HP now, we're we're not too uh not too shabby. That's all I got. Baby's having a good time, you know. It, it, we are theorizing that that she may be starting the the very beginning phases of teething, which is like one of the most dreaded, possibly the most dreaded baby milestone, I think, because she's become a, a lot more fussy, and uh, also like very very drooly. Like she she's a little drool monster right now. When she's, that's a speed downgrade, we should be careful with those, but, um, when, when she's like, you know, she's just hanging out in her chair right now, she's totally fine. But if she's, like, if we stand her up, or if, if we give her, like, tummy time or something like that, she's, uh, she's, she's leaking. Right, baby? Right, baby? You had a good sleep, though. Yeah, I know you had a good sleep, because we put you in the crib... Uh, and, and your head is facing the one wall, and when, when I wake you up, it's always facing the opposite wall. You're, you're doing like a 360 in your, in your dreams. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up! Betty, so here I am. <laughs> Getting older all the time. Kind of, I guess. I mean, literally, yes, of course. Oh no, sweetie. I, I had a feeling we, we may need to do a little, uh, like a pause break at some point. She's, she's had some fussy mornings. Just, just sneaking out the Isaac episodes. She's a very polite baby. She's a very polite baby. But, uh, after, you know, if an Isaac episode goes over 25 minutes, she's like, uh... Come on, man. Like, this is crazy. 20, 20 minutes of work. Haven't you heard of the Pomodoro method? 
Dude, she's very into startup culture. It's it's like it's it's her thing right now. Some kids get into dinosaurs. She's really getting into the story of like we work and Theranos and stuff like that. She's learning a lot. I... What the what the heck is your problem? What the heck is your problem? What are you what are you talking about? What what could possibly be wrong? You think you got problems? Every morning I wake you up and then I, I turn on that uh, cool like LED mood light we got in your nursery. It turns on the green and it makes the diaper look bright red every time I open it. And then every morning I have a little heart attack. <laughs> oh no. Every morning I have a little heart attack. I'm like, what? Pooped out a bunch of, you know, cherry limeade. And then I turn on the real light and it's just like diarrhea. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, business as usual. <laughs> yeah. What do, what do you got to cry about? Hey, plus you're having the, the breakfast of like a princess's breakfast. I'm probably just going to have something stinky like a quesadilla. <laughs> and, okay, well, you know. Hey, hey, hey. Getting a little close for comfort there. Ow, ow. I, we, we have hit a baby milestone, by the way. She did, uh, she made a three syllable word. She's mostly a, a one syllable Marty right now, you could say. Like, you can hear. She does a lot of, uh, uh. She does a lot of, as well. Like, a lot of TV static. Um, occasionally, when she's feeling quite talkative she'll go agu agu then like the other day we were just hanging out on the couch me uh, me kate and the baby and uh she went like agupi and we were like what <laughs> you can't just you can't just throw that out there you gotta hit us with like a three two one countdown before you just go agupi what does it mean I have no, I'm happy, maybe? I don't know. I, like, I don't assume that it's because it sounds like. I just, like, you know. Like, I know what this means. This this is the baby going, like, Hey, I'm, I'm sick of playing with this toy. I want the best toy of all time, which is you picking me up. Okay, okay. Baby, just let me finish this floor, and then we'll play your, your favorite game, okay? She's like, No! <laughs> This floor, that's like 10% of the time that I've been on planet Earth. It's an incalculable length. She's very, she's got a great vocabulary for a baby. There's no doubt about that. I mean, did you hear Agopi? Oh, oh <laughs> no. It's the, the increasingly, like, impatient. It'll, it'll get you, man. Oh, Sometimes it, you you can buy yourself a little bit more time with the baby if you go like this. If you, and, it, and I'm not very good at rolling my R's, okay? So I have to cheat a little bit, but it goes like this. Okay, baby, 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 ready? Ag, ag. She's smile. This is the biggest smile I've ever seen. Ag, ag. She says, ah, ah, ag. Yeah, I don't know. Like we're we're pretty close to entering like a time period where the Isaac episode is literally just gonna be me, like trying to keep the baby from crying and and doing like literally no commentary whatsoever except for that. And you know what I've learned recently is that I think that people would be very into that. I think that people would be very excited by this. To be honest with you, we might as we might as well use a Pandora's box, man. I don't know why I left the room. She hit me with the Okay, baby, we're almost done the floor. We're almost done the floor. Hey, you know, it was also kind of an exciting weekend. I got my new uh, uh, camera set up. So you can come watch the stream if you want to see it. I'm not a very good salesman. Because what I should say is like, oh, you wouldn't believe the quality. But what I'm actually thinking is like, now that I've got it set up, I'm like, I don't think this looks any different at all. <laughs> I think, I think, I think Sony is just repackaging Logitech C920 webcams into 
you know, these uh, four-digit uh, 4K DSLRs, man. Anyway, I'm going to pause and take care of the baby briefly. And we're back. It's been a little bit. It's been a little bit trying to remember where we're at on this run. I think we're... Oh, we have Epic Fetus and full HP. That's right. Okay, so we're going to win. <laughs> I I got the, the baby code wrong. The da baby code, T starring Tom Hanks, written by Dan Brown. I can I can name three actors that were in the first Da Vinci Code movie: Tom Hanks, Paul Bettany, also known as Vision, also known as the male lead from Wimbledon, the 2004 uh, tennis-based romantic comedy starring Paul Bettany and Kirsten Dunst. Um, also. Uh, Female lead, Audrey Tattoo, also known as uh, Chocolat. Wait, no, also known as Amelie. <laughs> I believe Chocolat is, it stars uh, Juliette Binoche. Okay, my mistake. Uh, but I, I cannot name a fourth actor. I know there was, um, there, there was an older gentleman. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that it was Christopher Plummer. I'm going to say that it was Christopher Plummer, okay? Just give me, I'm looking it up on my phone. Da Vinci Code 2006 film. Looking at the cast. Tom Hanks, Audrey Tetto, Paul Bettany, Ian McKellen, dude. That's that's way different. I would I mean, come on. How do you forget Ian McKellen? Uh, it's pretty easy. Um cuz the movie's not very good, quite frankly. I don't know about the book. You know, I uh I will say I grew up, uh, like I was in high school when the Da Vinci Code was popping off. And let me tell you, baby, <laughs> it popped off. You will probably never experience it. I mean, there, there will be books that will be insanely popular, but... I mean, you're, you're not going to be there. If you weren't there, if you remember what it was like when the Da Vinci Code came out, then you weren't really there, baby. You ever think that we grew up in like a super good... I mean, I, I'm assuming you're around the same age as me, but... You ever think that we grew up in a super good era for, like, uh, quote-unquote young, young adult fiction? I was thinking about that. So, like, obviously we didn't grow up, you know, if you're around my age, at the point that The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books were released. But we were at the perfect age for the movies, you know? Literally, like, some of my first... Oh, that's a new sound. Some of my, some of my first, like movie going experiences that weren't quote unquote kids movies were the were the Lord of the Rings movies. Ah hoo. Ah hoo. And then um you know I, I I was in fifth grade I think when the first Harry Potter novel came out. I didn't read the rest uh, of them cuz I mean quite frankly the take is aging very well now. <laughs> I was just way ahead of the curve in uh, 1999 but um, I was never a huge Harry Potter fan, but obviously they were like insanely popular and the movies were also insanely popular. Um, and you know, however you feel about it now, doesn't take away necessarily from the experience that you had with them when you were 10 or 11 years old. Um, and then even like into... I think we will take this, but uh, we don't need anything else. Even into like early adulthood, like the Hunger Games... We also did go through Twilight. We don't need to speak of that, but um, the the Hunger Games, you know, I, I, the books were a little bit. They were aimed at maybe the people that were born five or six years earlier or later than myself. But the first couple of movies were pretty good. I, I thought they were they were good movies. Um, and then the third one, I was just bored to tears. And then the fourth one, I think I watched it on an airplane, and I was like, just just stop, okay. I, I get that they tried to make, like, I mean, it's not even an allegory, like, it's just outwardly political. But, you know, the, they, it's like the Hunger Games is, is screwed up, man, because they sucker you in with, like, the Battle Royale concept. And then afterwards, like, the last two movies are like, what if that didn't exist at all? And instead it was just a bunch of, like, 17-year-old kids rebelling against the government. And you're like, I mean, I get it, but it, I don't know, it became... Too, too rote young adult for me. Let's put it that way. Now, we got to be slightly cautious about our HP. Hello, baby. 
Now, I, when I said I got the baby code wrong, what I, what I was trying to say uh, covertly was I thought the baby just wanted some attention, but actually she had uh, she had a heck of a diaper. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, problem solved. Problem solved. Baby, what the heck is going on? What's the problem? You know what? I, I, I've this is not going to endear me very well to a certain subset of my audience. I've been reading a lot of Dr. Seuss novels lately. Um, you okay, sweetie? Yeah, you're okay. Uh, and by novels, I'm joking. I mean, like, you know, Hop on Pop, Green Eggs and Ham, etc., etc. I'm going to tell you straight up, that dude is a hack. Do Dr. Seuss, if you haven't read a Dr. Seuss book since you were, like, five years old, go pick one up. And then, you know, he, he might be the most undeservedly famous author of all time. I get that the books are for kids, but they've also, they made the, you know, a Cat in the Hat movie. They made a Grinch, or there's several Grinch movies. They made a uh, Horton Hears a Who movie, the Lorax, etc., etc. All At least the early childhood books are actually, like, insulting. Like, I, I don't know if maybe it's just me, but when I read them to the baby, I find myself, like, uh... Like, I, I can't even read it straight up. I have to constantly insert my own commentary, which I'm sure is annoying for her. But, uh, you know, it... Like, the worst was... So I read, you know, uh, 10 apples up on top. Literally, is just... And I'm not expecting, you know, Moby Dick. But, like, it's... Uh, you got, like, a lion and another animal. Apparently, my reading comprehension's not so good. I should probably remember the other animal. And they're competing to see who can put more apples up on top. Of their heads. Oh, wah. <laughs> so there were there literally every rhyme is like one, two apples on my head or apples on top. I promise you, I won't let them drop. And they never deviate from that formula whatsoever. Three, four, five apples up on top. I'll tell you what, they'll never drop. You know, and you're just like, man, like this guy is seriously, he must have been writing like 17 books a day at the height of his pro productivity. Baby! Baby, what the, what the heck is the problem here? You just want a little, a little daddy attention? You just want a little daddy attention, huh? But the worst for sure is uh, Hop on Pop. It's like he just gave up. Go, go read Hop on Pop real quick and then come back. It'll take you about a minute. Literally the whole book is like this. Pup, cup, pup in a cup, cup, pup, pup on a cup, tree, brie, a brie in a tree, brie tree, a tree under a brie, like it just, and then at the end it has the audacity to be like, if this book changed your life, please leave a review, yeah, it changed my life, uh, changed my life uh, for the worse, right, I'm just joking, it's nice to have the bonding time, I, I apologize, you know, like, it is what it is. The baby, she loves to make the noise. I mean, what do you want me to do here, right? Like, uh, my wife wakes up at like 5 a.m. To, to pump so the baby can have uh, a, a fresh breakfast. I, I'm on morning duty with the baby, but the spice must flow, right? Like, the Isaac, the Isaac mines, they, they gotta keep producing ore, you know? So occasionally you're gonna get some <laughs> episodes that are just the baby. Uh, she she do be making a lot of noise, right? Hopefully it hasn't been too disruptive. What do you think, baby? I mean, if it's any consolation, it takes me like 90 minutes to make a 25 minute Isaac episode at this point in my life. So so trust me, I'm right there with you. Right, baby? Can I? I'm on the cathedral, baby. Can I put you down? It'll only be like four or five minutes. I promise, sweetie. It'll be like four or five minutes. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try. Okay, and if, if you want to make noise, go ahead. Just know that like a lot of people are gonna. Oh my god, a lot of people are gonna be like, "This is really cute," and then there's gonna be like four weirdos that are like, "This is outrageous. This is unacceptable." But you know, if if Daddy's mental health, if, if you treat it like that flippantly, then, you know, what am I going to say? You're a baby. You got to do it. You, you got to do what's right. You know, you got to live your truth. 
We genuinely could lose this run still. I lost some HP I'm not too proud of. I mean, I've been a little distracted for sure on this run. I've been playing some, like, like bullet chess. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I lost, I don't know, like something like 75 ELO. In the, in the past couple of days. Now, that was a dodge. It was really disheartening, right? By the way, Bullet, I honestly think is like... I think they should make Bullet illegal. It's actually like... It, it's basically just free gambling. Like, it, it, it hits the same centers of your brain that I think, like, playing a slot machine does. I think it's kind of... It's, it's certainly not chess. Let's put it that way. But regardless, I'm not trying to be a snob. If anything, I'm just saying, like, it's... It, it has such an unfair advantage of getting the dopamine going. Um, but I was like, man, why do I, why am I losing so many, like, games in Bullet? And one of them is, one of the obvious reasons is, you know, you only have a minute to think of your moves. So, you know, occasionally, yeah, you're going <laughs> to make some serious blunders. Um, but then the other one is I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, like a lot of the time that I'm playing Bullet, I, I'm like bouncing this baby simultaneously and, you know, occasionally... She's going like, ah, and I gotta look over, and I'm like, you know, maybe this is a sign that I should just not be playing a, a, a mode of chess where, like, time controls are so important. <laughs> I don't think we want any of those. I'm telling you, I think dad's strength is a real thing. People always talk about dad's strength. Yeah, right, baby? I think there's there's two versions of dad strength, and, and I mean this sincerely. Genuinely, like, there, there will be some humor here, but I mean it kind of unironically. I do think there's a little dad strength in the sense that, you know, you're, you're physically speaking, you're, you're picking up, a, you know, a 5 to 10 kilogram sack multiple times a day, and sometimes holding it as it tries to, like, squirm away. Um... You know, for, for hours and hours every day, and that builds some kind of musculature for sure. Um, but then the, the secondary th uh, thing <laughs> I honestly feel about dad strength is that when you're when you're a parent, I think you you learn that uh, your own uh, discomfort no longer matters. I mean that in a positive way, by the way. Like you're looking after uh, you know a, a, a living thing that relies on you for a hundred percent of its uh everything comfort sustenance etc etc so you realize as you, as you pick up the baby again because she's, she's been sitting down for three minutes so you gotta pick up the baby again you realize that that you know you, you get a great tolerance for your own discomfort so i think that the real you know quote unquote dad strength is you know recognizing that Hey, you know, this task that I'm doing might be kind of annoying or even maybe a little physically uncomfortable, but on the flip side, you know, ha having changed about mm, four to five hundred uh, diarrhea diapers over the past five or six months, like, oh my god, this is nothing, right? Yeah, let's push the car out of the snow. Yeah. Oh my. Okay, baby, I have some HP. Maybe you want to, like, sit on my lap? Maybe you want to sit on my lap here, okay? All right, you ready? I got the microphone right up in the baby's face, so if she if she says something regrettable, I apologize, okay? We're, we're going to yank that mic. Now, I again, you, the way I'm sitting, the baby's on my lap. I'm I'm my my hands are hyper extended to try to reach the keyboard. No wonder, you know, people of a certain age tend to start getting back pain. I got a serious amount of gamer hunch going on right now. But if it stops the baby from crying, and, and, and moreover, if it makes the baby uh, happy, then, you know. It's like Cheryl Crow said, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. Alright, we're, we're free, baby. We're free. And for the next 23 minutes, you get unfettered daddy time. You ready for that? Y'all ready for dad? 
Oh, she loves it. Well, as a viewer, thank you for your patience today. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, episode. That's nine in a row, and we're, we're getting back after a couple of spicy runs uh, earlier this week. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. upset a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash northernlion, and I will see you there every day but Saturday. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. See you.